Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 37 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In this video, I'm gonna touch on four main topics. MIDI recording techniques with take folders, comping MIDI recordings with those take folders, and then I'll jump down into MIDI automation and show you some interesting velocity functions and how to adjust sustain pedal CC automation. Before I get into the tutorial, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. If you're a musician, songwriter, or producer, and you work with collaborators on a regular basis, you've got to check out boombox.io. Boombox is an incredible new service that allows you to upload your tracks and then invite collaborators to view, download, and leave timestamped feedback on your tracks. Or if you're a mixing engineer like me, you can give your mix clients viewer access, which means that they can listen to and comment on the files, but they cannot download, edit, or delete the files. Once the client is happy with my mix and they've paid the final balance, I change their access to editor and they now have access to download their track. This is an incredibly helpful safety for me when working with my mixing and production clients. Boombox.io is absolutely free to get started. So sign up for an account today and get four gigabytes of free storage. So for my musical example, I'm going to play some piano. I'm just using the Steinway Grand Library preset here. I'm using a Novation Launch Key 61 with a sustain pedal to sustain the chords. I'm gonna start by turning off the count in because I actually want my recording to start at bar two. So I'm just gonna start at bar one, hit record, and then I'll jump in at bar two. And the reason for that is if I play a note that comes in before bar once, like if I play something on bar one and the note comes in slightly before bar one, that note is going to get cut off. So I don't want that to happen. So this is another reason why I like to start my recordings at bar two rather than bar one. Okay, so I'm just gonna play in some chords. So let me give this a go. Okay, so that's a good take of some chords. It's not perfect or anything, but let's say I wanna record a few more takes and play around with some different chord positions, different voicings, or maybe play around with some different extended harmonies. But I don't want to lose this original take. And sometimes it's just best to play around and improvise on the fly. So I might want to record additional MIDI recordings inside of a take folder, as I demonstrated in a previous video with audio recordings. So to do that, you're gonna go up to Logic Pro, Settings or Preferences, go to Recording, and then you'll see your MIDI overlapping track recordings here. You might have this set to merge, which is going to merge any MIDI recordings together. Uh, and you may want to change this to create a take folder. So if you change cycle off and cycle on both to create take folder, this will do the same thing as overlapping audio recordings as I demonstrated in a previous video. It'll put them in a take folder. So let's do this again. I'm gonna hit record and just play in the same thing, but I'm gonna play around with some different voicings and some different hand positions. Okay, so that take was okay, but there were a couple of mistakes in there. So let's try doing one more. Okay, so I like elements of all three of these takes. There's some weirdness going on with the sustain pedal here. I missed uh, one of the sustain pedal points here, so we'll fix that in just a bit. 
And that's what these gray bars on the region are. They're sustained pedal events. Anytime you record with a MIDI CC, the CC events or the CC data will show up as these gray bars on the region. But first, let's just tackle choosing the correct takes. Now, one of the tricky things about using MIDI in take folders is that the quick swipe feature does not work with MIDI. It only works with audio. However, you can double click to open up a take folder and then select any of the takes inside. The only thing, again, that's tricky here is you have to sort of go through manually and split the take folder and choose the take that you want for each section. So usually what I'll do is I'll grab the marquee tool or I'll grab the scissors tool and I'll use these to split the take folder and choose different takes at different points in the recording. So there's already a mistake in that one, so I don't want that one. So let's jump up to take two. Okay, so let's say maybe right here at bar four, I'll, maybe I'll try this take instead. What you can do is turn off your bar snap, and then again, use your marquee tool or your scissors tool and cut out the area where you think you may want to choose a different take. So here I'm just separating the take folder, and now I can freely select a different take for this area. So I could do take two here, then I could do take three here if I wanted to. Yeah, so here's a spot uh, where I think maybe take three or take two is better here. And by the way, some of the sustain pedal messages are going to get kind of messed up when we split these into different uh, take folders. Don't worry about that for now. We'll fix it in just a bit. Let's go to take three here. Yeah, maybe I want to use take one here. So again, I'll split it, select take one. Okay, so once you've chosen the takes that you want, all you need to do is flatten each of these track stacks. Now you can do that by clicking on the take number and then selecting flatten, or you can just select all of these and press option shift U, which is what I'm gonna do. So option shift U, I flattened all of them, drag over all of them again, and just press J to join them together as a single MIDI region. Okay, so with all those regions joined together, I'm gonna double click to open it up in the piano roll editor. And one quick thing I wanna show you here is, it's pretty common with MIDI recordings, if you haven't quantized anything, for the MIDI notes to be slightly ahead of the grid. And you may want it this way on purpose just to maintain a natural you know, feel, especially with instruments like piano. If this is a synthesizer or something, you might quantize it right to the grid. But one of the problems with this, especially if you're using cycle mode, to sort of loop the region is this very first chord here won't play. Now it's playing for me because I have this option turned on, but there is an option that you have to turn on for each logic project that you open. It's not a global setting and it's called MIDI chase. So what you do is you go up to file, go to project settings, you go to MIDI and then under chase here, you turn on chase notes. Let me just show you what this does when you have this turned off, and it's turned off by default. So when I hit play there, right at bar two, what this is gonna do is it's going to skip all of these notes because the note off message came before the playhead. See how that skips those notes? I would actually have to set the playhead over here in order to catch the note on message. So anytime you're working with MIDI data like this that's slightly ahead of the region, you're gonna to wanna to go into your project settings, MIDI chase, and turn on chase notes. And what that'll do is it'll start up the playback regardless of where the playhead is on the grid. Even if it's like in the middle of a chord.
bring these velocities down a touch. And another thing you may want to do here is quantize. So let me just select all of these. I'm going to quantize to an eighth note, but I'm not going to quantize 100%. I'll do like maybe 40, 45% there, just so I can maintain a level of realism and make it sound like a human recording, not something that's perfectly quantized to the grid. Okay, so next let's take a look at some MIDI automation. In this video, we're really just gonna cover velocity and sustain pedal. So while you're in the piano roll editor, you can click here to show your automation. You can also just press A to hide and show your MIDI automation. Now by default, this will probably pop up with note velocity, not sustain. So before we get into the sustain pedal, let me show you some velocity functions down here. Now, just like up here in the piano roll editor, you can also edit your velocities down here. And this gives you more of like a visual uh, recreation of your velocities with zero being at the bottom and 127 being up at the top. So if I were to select all of the notes and use the velocity slider to move these around, you'll see that the velocity moves up or moves down. One thing you can do down here is with your main tool, with your pointer tool, you can click and drag and this will bring up the line tool. What the line tool does is it allows you to create sort of these velocity ramps. So if I wanna start quiet and then maybe work up to something louder, you can absolutely do that. Now something like that, where they're all sort of the same velocity at the same time, that's not really gonna work well for piano because it sounds a little fake, but if you do this with like a synthesizer or something, it should work out just fine. Another function you can use down here if you want all of the notes to sort of maintain their relative velocity is you can select any of the secondary tools except for the automation select or zoom tool. So I'll just go to the pencil tool. And instead of just clicking and dragging, you hold command and then click and drag. And what this will do is it'll create these velocity ramps, but it'll do it in a way where it sort of exponentially makes more out of the velocities or makes less out of the velocities. So you can do things like this where the notes kind of still keep their, their relative um, you know, position. Like if I want just the dynamic to get a little bit louder, I could do something like this. And now the dynamic gets a bit louder, but all of the notes kind of still maintain their, their relative position, as opposed to conforming all to one velocity setting. And again, that works with any of the secondary tools. You can just hold command to access that, except for the automation select and zoom tools. Next up, let's play around with the sustain pedal. So I'm gonna click right here. This is the automation parameter, and you can choose what automation parameter you want to edit. The ones that are actually being used will be shown at the bottom. So sustain pedal is one of the ones that's being used. And remember, because sustain pedal is a switch controller, there's really just two positions. All the way down at zero means that the pedal is not being pressed. And all the way up at 127 means that the sustain pedal is being pressed. So I like to think of this as everything under the 127 is being sustained. So for example, if I grab this and maybe pull this over like this, watch what happens. See how that note was not sustained, it wasn't smooth and fluid. So typically the way that piano players will pedal is if they need to release the pedal, they'll release the pedal right after the next chord is played. Some people think it's right before the chord is played, but for the smoothest sound, you're actually gonna release the pedal right after the chord is played. And that just makes sure that these notes here carry over to the front end of this chord. So everything here is gonna be sustained, 
here's a little mistake where I released the pedal a little too early. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that back. So I just like to go through and check my pedaling because, you know, I think I'm a pretty good piano player, but, you know, I do make mistakes and sometimes my, my pedaling is what's causing, you know, the MIDI recording to not sound as smooth as it could. And here's another one here. If I want all three of these notes to be sustained, I wanna make sure that the sustain pedal is pressed before these notes are released. Now, if some of these notes feel like they're kind of causing some dissonance, you can write in some new pedal automation. So to do this, you just click on the line and you just pull down to release the pedal and then pull up to 127 to press the pedal. And don't worry if this doesn't go all the way up to 127. Basically, the way this works is, at least in logic, I think anything above zero is going to give you a pedal on, so it doesn't necessarily have to be up at 127. Here, even at eight, the uh, the pedaling is, is happening, so don't worry that if it doesn't go all the way up to 127. But what I may do here is, for some of these notes where we've got some of these like kind of dissonant tones, what I'll do is just pull down the pedal for a moment, then bring it back up. And then this one to B down to A, that's a second going down to the tonic note. So let's just do this. I'm gonna pull this over here. So I release the pedal on that very last note and then bring it back in so it sustains. And yeah, even if you don't have a sustain pedal, you can still draw in sustain pedal automation. It's just a matter of choosing the sustain pedal as your CC controller and or your switch controller, and then come through here and draw in your sustain pedal automation. So that's an overview of MIDI recording with take folders, MIDI comping, and how to adjust the velocity and sustain pedal MIDI automation. In the next video, we'll continue on with MIDI recording techniques, where I'll show you how to use MIDI merge, how to use auto punch with MIDI recordings, and replace mode. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support, and thanks for watching.